Hello and welcome to this first video in the series of HL7 messaging tutorials where we look at that most fundamental of HL7 questions, what is HL7? Let's imagine that you've injured yourself and need to visit the hospital. Upon your arrival you're requested to fill out a form to provide your personal information. Details such as your name, date of birth, next of kin, allergies and other personal information are all filled out on the form. You hand this form back to the staff who then enter these details into the hospital information system or HIS. After waiting a pleasantly short period of time you meet with your doctor. You discuss your injuries and are examined by her. After assessing your condition she decides to order a series of x-rays, blood tests and schedules in future appointments. These are also entered into the HIS. This information is now needed by other medical staff and their computer systems so they can be prepared and able to continue the process of caring for your injuries. This is where HL7 comes into the picture. HL7 is a set of standards for transferring clinical and administrative data between hospital information systems. It's like a language that describes you and your medical information to all the hospital information systems and the best thing is all the systems speak the same language. So when the HL7 message is received by other computer systems, it can be unpackaged and understood and these applications in turn present your information to those that need it. HL7 is designed to work with every facet of your care, including specialized software such as digital dictation, laboratory information systems, radiology information systems and medical imaging equipment. So let's take a look at an HL7 message and see how it's built. Yes, I agree, if you haven't seen an HL7 message before, this is pretty scary. Even if you work with us all the time, it isn't exactly the easiest message to read. Let's face it, it was created for machines to understand, not people. That's where a professional HL7 message viewer and editor comes into play. In this tutorial series, we'll be using HL7 Soup as it focuses on the human side of the message, highlighting just what is important and simplifying learning about the HL7 messaging. But it's also because there's a 30 day free trial that you can download and install, allowing you to work at your own pace as you follow me through this tutorial. Let's zoom in so we can look at the same message in detail. We can see right away that this message is one to register a patient. Further, we can see details about the patient that has been registered. It's Sam Brown, a 36 year old man who lives in the city of Howick. And he was an outpatient two months ago when he was attended by Dr. Katrina Allen. If you'd like to work through this tutorial series with me, then I encourage you to download the free 30 day trial of HL7 Soup from www.hl7soup.com. You can then follow me with the same message examples that I'm using throughout this tutorial. In the next lesson, we'll take a closer look at the HL7 message structure.